Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we will be doing a small hands on demo on the NAT gateways and NAT instances and we'll see how our private instances in the private subnet can get internet access. So if you're ready, let's begin. So now let's talk about the less efficient one, the NAT instance. Yes, it's an instance and it's an EC2 instance that acts as a NAT device. Okay, and just like any EC2 instance, you have to create your own NAT instance. And I hope you understand the issues that come along with that. So that is the same reason why AWS tells us to go with the NAT gateways because it is a fully managed service. But nevertheless, we have to discuss this. So NAT or network address translation instance, which like your NAT gateway resides in your public subnet and helps us to enable instances in the private subnet to initiate outbound IPv4 traffic to the internet or other AWS services. So this as well does not have support for IPv6 traffic. And for that, you have to go for the egress only gateway. And NAT instance quota depends on your instance quota for that region because it's an EC2 instance. So that will be applicable as per the charges that are incurred in that region. So now let's see how we can create a NAT instance. So here we can use the Amazon Linux AMIs that are already configured to run as a NAT instance. So that's a big relief. You don't have to take that headache of creating one for yourself. And you can search that in the list of AMIs that we have, which the extension or the naming convention that is like AMZN AMI VPC NAT and you can create your instance with that AMI with the instance family and the storage that you need and you have to attach an elastic IP to it and the good thing is that you can assign elastic IPs to your instance after it has launched as well if you're not going to go with the same public IP that was added as a part of the launch process while creating the EC2 instance and there are a few config changes that happen when we launch NAT instance AMI so here the IPv4 forwarding is enabled and ICMP redirects are disabled in the NAT setting configuration file. And as a part of the boot launch configuration, the script configure pad.sh runs at startup and configures IP table IPs. And let's see the explanation here for the visualization that we have. So here as well, we have our AZ, which has the private subnet, which has our database instances that needs internet access. So the main route table for the private subnet sends the request to the NAT instance and the NAT actually sends it back to the internet gateways using the elastic IP or the public IP that we have, which acts as a source IP. Similar to what we saw in the NAT gateways here as well, the main route table redirects traffic to the NAT instances in the main route table and the custom route table tells it to be forwarded from the NAT instance to the internet gateway. And that is how the instance at private subnet gets internet access. And the only difference that you see here is basically between the NAT gateways and the NAT instances. And the very important thing is to ensure that you have the main route table configured for all the public routed internet connectivity to the NAT instances or the NAT gateways in the NAT gateways section. And the NAT gateway or the NAT instance should point everything to the internet gateway because this is the public subnet. So when it comes to NAT gateways, we did not create any instances per se, but we just created the NAT gateway service. But in NAT instances, we have to create the NAT instance or the EC2 instance which will act as a NAT device for us. So as we have already created the private instances and the public instances, I won't create these two again. I'll just create the NAT instance and uh, we'll see how we can actually use it. So here you have to go to the launch instance, paste this, this is the extension for which the AMI that we want. I can just choose Amazon Linux. I can choose the first one that we have, Amazon AMI VPC NAT. I can just select this. And t2.micro is fine with me and I can have this in my own VPC, my VPC demo and this will be also in the public subnet. We can assign it a public IP or we can assign it a elastic IP as well. So don't worry about that. So I'll assign it a public IP, but I'll ensure that I'll assign an elastic IP to this. Then just click on add storage. Then click on add tags. This is my NAT device, my NAT device instance. On the security group, I can create a new one. My NAT instance SG. And I have SSH. And uh, what I can do is I can add a rule for ICMP as well, ICMP4. That should be enough for me. 
That's also fine for me. I'll just click on review and launch. So here it is telling me that boot from general purpose SSD or so free tier, you can get up to 30 GB of general purpose SSD. We can use it, recommend it. So I'll go over this, not a problem. Just click on launch. Yeah, this is fine. I can go with the same key. Click on view instance. So I can go with this public IP if I want, or else I can go ahead and attach a elastic IP to this. But if I go to elastic IPs, this elastic IP is already there for me. And I can attach elastic IP or associate elastic IP to my instance. So there's the one, my NAT device instance. If you just click on this, you will get the drop down. Just click on this, choose the private IP. It's okay, you don't have to choose it, but yeah, it's fine, not a problem. Then just click on associate. So now it is associated to this. So if I go back to my instance, so there's the elastic IP that is associated. So now we have everything that we want. But the next thing that we want to do is basically to check whether we are able to access internet, isn't it? So we have to go to the VPC again, we have to go to the route table, and we have to create a new route table just like we did when we were creating the NAT gateway. So my route NAT instance, isn't it? So I choose my VPC again and just click on create. And just close it. So now what we have to do, we already know this, we have to edit the route and we have to add the route. And here I have to give, tell me what should we choose. What is an NAT instance? It's an instance, right? And click on instance and I'll choose the my NAT device instance and just save the route. And now associate the private subnet. I do the subnet and just click on private subnet and save it. Now it is associated. That's it. Let's see whether we are able to connect to the internet or not. Let's go back to my public instance, copy the public IP. I'll just paste it. So there's the instance that I have in the public subnet. Obviously, it will be able to connect for us. So next thing was, we'll have to go to the home folder, ec2-user, and here we have the key that we want to connect to the private instance. So what is my private instance IP? I'll go to my private IP and I'll choose the private IP here. And then I'll just try to connect. I have already logged in before, so it should be able to log in. Now just click on ping google.com. And once I click enter, it should be able to connect. Otherwise we have messed up something really bad. What is the problem here? You know, what is the problem that we have done here? I think the problem is source destination check. That's the problem I feel. This is an at instance. You must stop source destination checking and at instance must be able to send and receive traffic when the source or destination is not itself. So this is the mistake that I had done. See, learnings, isn't it? So just click on stop and save it. And now go back to the instance once again and do a ping google.com. See, it's working. That's what I was thinking. What is the mistake that we have done? Sometimes we do miss out on things. We're not 100% accurate, right? We are bound to make mistakes. And that is how we learn, isn't it? But I hope you enjoyed this session. And if you're new to the channel, then please make sure that you do subscribe and welcome to the family. I hope I'll be meeting you in the next session of AWS. So until then, it's Pythonic signing off.